We are learning more and more about how to target different resistance mechanisms in advanced lung cancer. That story was initially about T790M, but now we're finding um, MET amplification is a recurring resistance mechanism. We had a recent paper in EGFR mutant lung cancer that when you develop MET amplification and you add a MET inhibitor, savalitinib, you can overcome resistance and get cancers to respond again. Uh, we see this uh, in met mutant lung cancer. You can develop a met mutation and you can switch from one type of met inhibitor to another type of met inhibitor. And of course, we know we're seeing this in ALK where if you have certain types of ALK resistance mechanisms, you can switch to a different flavor of ALK inhibitor and you can again develop a, a response. And what that means is that through using precision uh, cancer genotyping strategies at resistance, we can help prolong the benefit from targeted therapy and prevent the need for eventual chemotherapy. But doing this is tricky. It requires repeat genotyping, not just knowing what the genotype is initially, but knowing what the genotype is at resistance. And that is where we develop this enthusiasm, the initial enthusiasm for liquid biopsies. Because of course, for an advanced cancer patient, it's hard to genotype again. And so thus we started using cell-free DNA as a, as a way to find T790M, to look for MET mutations and ALK mutations, to look for amplification. And it works sometimes. When you find that resistance mechanism, it's a signal that you can pursue, but you don't always find what you're looking for. And that's where we develop this initial paradigm that liquid biopsy genotyping is a first pass, but because sensitivity is not perfect, you need to use that resistance biopsy as a fallback plan. I think that's especially true when we start looking for trickier and trickier resistance mechanisms. MET amplification is actually pretty hard to find on a liquid biopsy. You need a lot of DNA floating around, a lot of tumor DNA. And so if you do a, a quick NGS at resistance, you might miss MET amplification. And so in my patients, for example, with EGFR resistance, I'll send a liquid biopsy. I'll look for one of these emerging resistance mechanisms, C797S, but if I don't see something, I'm pursuing that biopsy as my fallback plan because the tumor biopsy at resistance gives me MET amplification, gives me small cell transformation, allows me to find acquired fusions. I've seen acquired out fusions, acquired ret fusions, and all of these are harder to find in the blood. And we use the tumor resistance biopsy as the fallback plan. Let's talk about using liquid biopsies instead of at resistance upfront for initial genotyping of lung cancer. Uh, I don't know about you, but in my cancer patients, not every, pan, every patient gets a genotype figured out. Why is that? You know, I try to genotype, genotype all my patients, but sometimes the tissue is not adequate. Sometimes I don't have time to wait around for the tumor genotyping results. And often I just can't get my hands on the specimen. The patient has come from a couple hours away. Another hospital has the specimen. I ask for the tissue to do genotyping. They've sent the tissue out somewhere else. I don't know what's pending. And so how do I solve this problem? I send a liquid biopsy upfront to help me genotype that patient efficiently so I can plan first line therapy. I need those results both because I'm looking for a targeted option. I wanna find each of our ALK, ROS, BRAF, RET, MET, each of these leading to pill therapy options that are standard of care or investigational. But I also want to use those genotyping results to help me figure out whether immunotherapy is a good option, right? I need to know EGFR ALK. If they have an EGFR ALK positive, immunotherapy is not a good plan for them. I, I need to use targeted therapy and uh, Pembro is not likely to work, even if they're pdl one positive. And so I bring together genotyping results and pdl one results to make a decision in the first line. And, and sometimes, you know, there's some urgency. We got to get going on treatment. What I find is if I send a liquid biopsy, we're often using an NGS panel that gives me many, many mutations. I can get results back usually around eight or nine days. And what that means is when I meet that first patient, I say, look, we could start treatment next week. But if we start next week, we're going to be starting with limited data. How about we start treatment in two weeks? Let's plan treatment in two weeks. And in two weeks, I can have all of the results that I need to effectively plan a precision treatment strategy for you. 